as you can see, even with this uh, cheap, nasty piece of equipment, I can see a very strong um, vacuum leak there as a result of the smoke. G'day guys, you're back with Miracle Max. In this new series, DIY Workshop Equipment, I'm going to show you how to make diagnostic tools and personalised equipment for your workshop on a budget. Let's get into it. Today I'm looking for a vacuum leak on a Mitsubishi Triton 2010 model with a 4D56 engine in it. So I'm going to use this smoke tester that I've built to try and find the fault. Not all workshops are huge. In fact, like my own, it's a very, very small workshop with just me involved. So not only is space limited, but funding as well. That's why making your own equipment to a certain extent can be a great thing. Now you're never going to get all the bells and whistles that you get with the expensive tools, but you're going to get something that's going to work and help you on the diagnostic path. Now smoke machines can cost well over a thousand dollars. They have bells and whistles, you can add UV dye to it as well, uh, they can have flow gauges, regulators attached to them, all sorts of things, but they cost a fortune and I can't afford that. I'm trying to do this on the cheap, I'm going to make the POV pack. So firstly, let's see if this smoke machine that I've built is going to work. Let's see if we can find this vacuum leak on the Triton. And then I'll show you the build behind it. Another thing I forgot to do, of course, was to put on some uh, a plastic bag over the intake um, system. Main, re main reason being is, of course, if you don't, all that smoke can also go back to the intercooler, back to your air filter, etc., etc. Um, through your turbo so you lose a lot of that um, smoke and you really want it inside the engine don't you not sure if you could see that but it's definitely coming from around the EGR valve area um, it may need another gasket or something along those lines I'll pull it apart and have a look as you can see even with this uh cheap nasty piece of equipment I can see a very strong um, vacuum leak there as a result of the smoke uh, EGR fairly common of course we start with the paint tin with a lid it includes a pipe that goes through that that we can run air through it it includes a couple of binding posts uh, with banana connectors on them, or binding posts that are banana connector style. Some, uh, I believe it's nickel cadmium wire or resistance wire that will run electricity through it, or power through it. And finally, some camping wicks that will run the oil through and heat that up to create the smoke. I've already done some pilot holes in the uh, paint tin here. And notice they're a little bit offset. Hello, hello. They're a little bit offset here. There's one right down the bottom, off to one side. There's one little bit higher, central. What I did was I measured 15 mil from the bottom and 30 mil from the bottom as well, if you're interested in the measurements. Safety first. So once I file that down a little bit, it uh, should take the binding post quite nicely. And the next hole, well that goes in that hole, the centre hole. And then the next hole that I do will be the larger hole. So at the moment I've got both binding posts fitted, they're just sitting there at the moment. So um, whether I have to pull them out later on and seal them with something, I don't know. At the moment it's just proof of concept, so it's nice and neat. Either side my red and the black there, very attractive. Um, not that it's going to make any difference when I hook up power to it because um, for resistance wire it doesn't have direction. But either way it's going to look neat and tidy and as I said if I need to seal it later on I can do that. Now I'll go on to my main uh, pipe, aluminium pipe. This one here will go through there so I now, now need to drill that hole bigger. So that's that bit done. I've enlarged the holes, don't worry it looks a bit ugly but it'll work fine once a bit of sealant's put over it. Um, hold your ears. Uh, goes into there. Eh. And with 
a bit of extra pushing goes through. Um, what I'm going to do is put an airline fitting that'll screw in quite nicely just in there, sealing of course. Um, but the goal of this particular pipe is I'll drill a whole heap of little holes in here, then that will uh, that will blow up against the, the wick and that will encourage more smoke to develop. So that's my next goal. I'll drill a, a row, row of holes along here, little tiny ones, and that'll assist with the, the uh, dispersion of the air, I guess you could say. I've drilled all the holes, uh, as you can see, right across there. Uh, that, I think they're about, like, I don't know, two mil, three mil, something along those lines. Nothing great, and as you can see, it's not overly straight. Um, I'm trying to convince myself that that's to aid in the dispersion of the air, but I think I'm just a lousy, I'm just lousy at drilling. Never mind, it'll do the job. So, um, as you can see, a few little burrs here and there. I was going to get my Dremel out and tidy it up, but you know the Dremel's sitting there. But it's a lot of effort to hook up an extension cord and then use it, etc. So I just filed it. But once, honestly, once it's all sealed up, it'll be fine. And after all. Isn't it more important that it works rather than just looks pretty? You see the little holes are lined up there. And then my air connector will get screwed in the side there. I've ended up reusing the airline fitting that I had on my previous failed attempts, um, which included a castellized nut, which fitted nicely onto the airline fitting to hold it in place. So that's my lid, which in turn will fit on there. And that will be the output uh, of the smoke that goes into the inlet manifold of the engine. Uh, all I've got to do now is hook up the resistance wire onto my binding posts, do a few calculations of how much voltage and current should flow, um, add a bit of baby oil, fingers crossed it should work, uh, once I add some air to it of course. Cool, we'll give it a shot, hey. I've now uh, got my nickel cadmium wire, and my resistance wire, and I've wrapped it uh, actually around a 3.8 drive extension bar just to get that nice even coil on it. What I'm going to do now is feed wick, two wicks, one through here down to the centre and then one from here down to the centre so that they both will pull up from the baby oil and then they'll leach along here where they'll be heated by the resistance wire and then hopefully that should create the smoke that I'm after. I've fed the two wicks through the uh, resistance wire there as you can see, met in the middle and it, that'll drop down into the oil. Hopefully that'll pull it up either side, make a nice even path for the uh, oil to go through and of course as the um, current runs through that resistance wire heating it up it should start to smoke. So now it's just time to hook it up to the binding posts. So hopefully we're on the final stretch. Uh, it's getting cold so I want to finish up for the night but I, I just want to make sure that it actually works first. So proof of concept and all that. A um, few things we've got to do first particularly with regard to our resistive wire is figure out how much voltage and current to run through it. So how do we know how to do that? Well, we can thank a bloke by the name of Georg Simon Ohm. We need to measure the resistance of that resistance wire, then we can find out the voltage and the current. I want to run about uh, perhaps two amps through it. Just for tonight, I've got a, 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 um, a bench power supply that's current adjustable as well. Uh, later on, I'll probably build something that I can use straight off of 12 volt battery. So we need to measure the resistance off our binding posts there 9.1 ohms so now we need to do a couple of calculations and that'll be what 18.2 i think it is isn't it 18.2 volts we'll just see how we go for starters anyway i just want to see if the thing actually works i've already added some baby oil to it i've soaked the top of the wick as well to help it uh, to pull up the baby oil and now it's just a matter of flipping the switch, doing a few adjustments, and hopefully we get some smoke happening. So as you can see, um, I'm, I'm not getting the two amps that I was hoping for at this stage, obviously, because it was, what was it, 18 volts, I think it was. But uh, even if I run straight off the battery at uh, 12 volts, that'll give me 1.5 amps using that particular um, uh, resistance wire. And let's just have a look. Now, I was getting smoke there before. Let's have a look. Yep, there we go. See the smoke? So um, we have got smoke coming off, 
but uh, perhaps not enough. Perhaps I need to give it more. There's not much baby oil in there at the moment. So um, I just obviously this is just at the point of test. Um, I haven't put any air in it. Keep in mind that. You know how I said I wanted uh, about two amps running through. And I said that it would require probably roughly about uh, 18 volts according to Mr Ohm. And that was our calculations on our sheet. Remember that? So now that we've got it up to our 18 volts, let's have, just have a look at the uh, smoke that's coming out of it now. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. There we go. Look at that. That's looking pretty good, hey? And if I apply just a little bit of air to it, just by means of blowing on this piece of pipe, let's see what happens. And of course, keep in mind that I haven't sealed anything at all as yet. So yeah, it's leaking out everywhere. But I guess the important thing is that it's creating smoke and that's what we're after, isn't it? But for now, that's uh, working pretty well. I'm fairly happy with that. Um, so fingers crossed, it will be a useful thing. Check that out. How's that for smoke? <coughs> Fine tuning, of course, but uh, pretty happy with the results. put air in through here this hose here and the air or the smoke comes out this side out the top and as you can see the hose going off to my vacuum port does exactly the same as the expensive brand uh, piece of plastic on the intake there and all we have to do is make sure that we keep our pressure fairly low um, I've got a regulator hooked up there with very very low pressure going into it as I already said I run about 15 volts into this um, wired configuration or resisted wire in there which is a bit of a pain because when you're working on a vehicle the main thing that's available is 12 volts so I need to shorten that resisted wire as I mentioned how can I do that how do I know which the correct length is Ohm's law states that V is equal to I times R now I don't know if you understand what that actually means but it's voltage this is the way I write it and I'll explain why. Voltage is equal to current times by resistance. You're saying, Miracle Max, why would you write it like that? That's not the official formula. I'll explain. Let's have a look at our multimeter, shall we? Voltage, which is in V. Resistance, which is in omega. And finally, down the bottom here, we have A as current. That's how us techies speak, so that's the way I write it. So what um, information do we have? Well, as I said, I run 15 volts and I don't know what the current is. And the resistance, let's have a look at the resistance. So the resistance across my wire is about 9.1 by the looks. So to figure that out, all we have to do is 15 divided by 9.2, which is equal to, drum roll please. Time to pull out the calculator, I'm not that smart which is 1.6 um, amps. Well, how does that help me? Well, I want to make it so that I can run on 12 volts. Let's have a look at that. So if I have 12 volts, and I know that I've got 1.6 amps, all I have to do now is divide uh, 12 volts by 1.6 amps to find out what sort of resistance I need. And that is 7.5. Whoops. Ohm's resistance. How am I going to figure that out? It's actually not that hard. So we know that we've got 9.2 ohms here at the moment. To get my 7.5, all I do is disconnect here and go down into the wire here somewhere, if I can get to it, till I get to 7. Well, there's 8.1. That's not too far off, is it? Let's go one coil further, or half a coil further. 7.8, a little bit further. Let's try just down here somewhere. There we go, look at that. We've got about 7.2. So that's the wire. That's where I need to cut it and extend it back to my banana connector. And then I can run it on 12 volts with the same amount of current. 
obviously you need to have it on a stable sort of levelish type um, surface which I've done. I've got my red connected up to my battery just about to put my negative on the negative side. Let's have a look and see what happens inside when I do. See that smoke starting to come off now? Which is excellent. The capillary action that's being drawn up by the uh, wick and um, if I blow air through it then I can um, get it to come through the actual engine if I just blow it it will encourage it to um, come through further so you can see a steady stream coming through and when I blow of course it encourages it I wasn't happy with the amount of smoke that was coming out there before it was a bit on the El Lamo side so what I did was cut the resistance wire a bit more now I'm down to 5 ohms instead of 7 ohms that we had before. You've got to find a balance. Just keep in mind this is uh, oil, so it will catch a light if you're not careful. But in comparison now, just have a look at the amount of smoke. But notice also that the resistance wire is getting red hot. But so far oh, I haven't seen any flames. But the amount of smoke is pretty much uh, you know, doubled at least, as you can see. Getting plenty of smoke off it now. The wires do get red, but um, so far no mishap at the moment, that is. Plenty of smoke now, which is awesome. So you've got to play with that resistance wire to make sure that you get it correct. So there you go, guys, a smoke machine on the cheap. It was roughly about 10 to $20. That's not including the regulator and accessories as well. So it does the job just like the big boys, but it doesn't cost over $1,000. So hopefully you'll get something out of this video and you can build your own smoke machine to find vacuum leaks, evap leaks, uh, exhaust leaks and other leaks as well. If you did enjoy this video and you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel, give it a like and feel free to comment down below. Of course, don't forget about that notification bell. You don't want to miss any future videos. So until next time, guys, this is Miracle Max signing off. I will catch you later.